Welcome to my garden. This is Blue Heron Hill and I'm Sue. It's a chilly, chilly day. And if you can see in the background, my maple trees haven't even started to change color yet, but we are deep into fall now. Um, temperatures, we're lucky they're going up to 60, but uh, I'm not helping for much more than that. I still have some things in the garden that need to be to be harvested. And one is something that I've never ever grown before. These are garden huckleberries. And I was very intrigued when I got Baker Creek's catalog about this berry that you could grow in one season and get a fruit. I have seven plants and they are absolutely loaded. Um, and I even have blossoms still coming with more. Now, these green berries, they are not going to ripen in time. But these blackish, dark, deep purple, deep black berries, I think are ripe doing some research they are supposed to go from glossy to dull now i can't really tell too much this looks pretty glossy to me and maybe compared to those i don't know glossy or dull but we are getting very close to a frost and so i think that I am just going to pick these. And I think I'm going to try and take them into the kitchen and make some uh, jam. So let's get picking all of these ones that look like they're possibly ripe and take them into the kitchen and see what we can do with them. Well, that was a quick pick. Uh, there's a few more green ones on there. There's some, um, there's some that are changing from the green to the purple. I just left those. I know that they are far from being ripe, but I would say this is a good quart and a half of berries off of six of these plants that I planted in the, you know, in May or so. I'm very excited about uh, seeing how these are going to cook up. Let's go into the kitchen. I'm going to wash them up. I'm going to de-stem them all and I'm going to cook them into a jam. Come on, let's go. Here we are in the kitchen. It's actually been a couple days, <laughs> but we are going to cook up these um, huckleberries, garden huckleberries. They are not the huckleberry that everybody thinks about that grows wild on the slopes of mountains and stuff and you pick them as you take your hikes. But garden huckleberries, um, as I said before, I found the packet of seed in the Baker Creek catalog and very intrigued by the fact that this is an annual, but it would give me a crop of fruit. So thought I'd try it this year. And now I'm gonna take you along and we're going to cook this up. And there's a couple different things you can do. You can make jam, you can make pies, you can make um, sauces, you can make a syrup. I was thinking in the lines of a syrup, but my food mill is on the, the blank thing. So I think I'm going to make like a sauce. As it turned out, I had six cups of black of these huckleberries. Now washed and de-stemmed. Always wash your produce when it comes in on the garden. Even though I don't use any pesticides or herbicides or anything like that, you never know what blows in. And besides, there's garden dust to want to wash that off. So these are rather hard. I've tasted them. They are not sweet. 
So this is definitely going to get sweetened and uh, we'll see how it turns out. I just wanted to bring you along with me and we're going to do this for the first time together. So pass or fail, you're here with me. Okay, let's go. The recipe called for three cups. I have six, I'm just gonna use them all. And so I'm going to essentially just double the recipe. So what we're gonna do, put all six cups in a saucepan. Then we're going to, um, uh, it calls for uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar. So I'm doing uh, one and a half. I think maybe I'll just rotate the camera down here so you can see what I'm doing. So um, then you need um, two thirds of a cup of water and that doubled is one cup and one third. So in many recipes called for soda, baking soda, um, this causes a certain kind of reaction with these berries. I'm gonna put this in in a little, you know, not right now, and because I wanna see it with my own eyes and not just on a video that I watched, and I want you to come along with me when I do that. It looks kind of spectacular. So I'm gonna get this started on the stove, um, get the water and the sugars melted and the berries started to you know, pop open and release their juice. So let's go over to the stove. Okay, this is probably gonna take a little bit of time to get up to a boil. So we may fast forward a little bit through this. It's getting there. Look at that deep, rich purple. Now, some of them have popped already, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's just tiny little seeds. So, a huge seed is not going to be a problem in processing these berries. So, it's nearly to a boil. Okay, we're at a simmer right now, and I'm going to turn it down. We have to simmer it for five minutes. So at this point, I am going to put in the baking soda. And look at that lovely, it's almost an emerald green color. Look at that. Stir that around. Ooh. So away goes that pretty, pretty purple color. Ooh. So it's obviously some kind of reaction. I'm gonna to have to do some research on, on what causes that. I did minor in chemistry in college, but <laughs> this I don't know. Let's see, let's do the color test here with the spoon. Wow. Wow, is that ever pretty? Look at that emerald green. Now in chemistry, there's a color change with this green and I don't know what it's called. I have to think about it. I'll put it down at the end if I can remember what it is. Oh, so long ago. Pretty green. Don't know if, if a green sauce is terribly appetizing, but maybe at Halloween it would be. Anyway, so this has got to simmer for five minutes and stirring it fairly constantly. Now five minutes is up and we have another addition. We're going to be adding some 
cornstarch that I mixed with a, a bit of water. Uh, there's probably about four tablespoons of cornstarch into about a, oh, nearly a half a cup of water. And this is for thickening. Stir that in. And now we're going to add some uh, two teaspoons of lemon juice. And this, as most things say, will give us back our purple color. And there goes that green. We are going to return this to a boil and then quickly turn it back down to a simmer for just a few minutes till it gets nice and thick and it's already pretty thick. I think that looks... Okay, I'm going to have to adjust that on my recipe and now it certainly is a luscious purple. All right, that is nice and thick. You can see that just sheets off the spoon. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. We're going to get my, um, <clears throat> my jars out of my hot water and can this up. Okay, hot jars, hot liquid to go in it, and we'll start canning this up. I'm going to do it to about a half inch head space. Very thick. Okay, this only needs to be water bath canned because it's heavily sugared. But we do need to wipe the rims. If you notice, you know, when I showed you the seeds, we don't want any of those seeds interfering with the rim of our jars and the lid seal. You can't always tell just by looking. So wiping it with some white vinegar is always the thing to do. Just finger tight. Always put a little vinegar in with my my water canning, water bath canning, and even in my pressure cooker. It takes the um, get that white film on some of the jars. So that's it. What I'm going to do right now, though, is wait one minute. I just baked a fresh loaf of bread today. So I think this deserves a little topping, even though this is kind of saucy and not so jammy. Look at that dark, rich color. Haven't tasted this before. So this is the first taste test of a garden huckleberry. Mmm. Mmm. I don't know what it tastes like. It's smooth. A little bit... I wanted it to taste like a blackberry. I really did. I thought for sure it tastes like a blackberry. But doesn't have any tart to it. It's more on a blueberry side, I think. 
This is going to be great on ice cream. <laughs> so, so thank you for following me along on this video. Finding out what to do with my garden huckleberries. I'm growing them next year. They're hands down. They're wonderful. So I hope you put this on your list to grow for next year. And if you've liked this content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and um, pass it along on all your social media sites. I'd love to have my, my subscriber number boosted up. Um, I will put all the links down below in the description box. And so until the next time that we can go digging in the dirt or actually cooking in the kitchen, happy gardening and cooking. Bye.